Hey guys, uh, Apple today released the announcement um, that iOS 6 will be available this fall and I just wanted to go over it quickly. Um, I know I've got a couple of readers who have iPhones like myself who are interested in knowing what will come next. Um, so they didn't give a total overall but they changed a bunch of things that I want to go over. Now I'm on apple.com forward slash iOS forward slash iOS 6 and I'm just going to discuss a couple of these things. Um, brand new that are coming through so let me just say this it is going to be free uh, it will be an update you will see it on your app center actually uh, you'll get a notification not from the app center but from the iOS itself telling you a software update is available when this is up for grabs um, and it is free and it's compatible with uh, I believe iPhone 3, 3S, 4 and 4S um, I know a lot of people hope to see something about an iPhone 5 but uh, that won't come for a bit but the iOS 6 has a bunch of cool new things and uh, one of the big things that they changed is maps so in, in an effort to compete with Google Maps um, Apple actually did a really nice and smart thing they added a couple new features to their map uh, application um, you can see here the overview just tells you what they exactly did in a nutshell but I'm just gonna go over it real quick they added turn by turn uh, notification now turn by turn meaning when you're let's say driving or walking uh, and you set a direction spot you can actually see with navigational arrows uh, where to go they also made it really smart uh, they made all the iPhones kinda speak in a certain way um, in, in a, a weird sort of way where for example, you see here in a screenshot, it says faster route available due to traffic. Routing can save six minutes. You'll get pop-ups telling you if the route you picked um, is, you know, there's, a, what's the word, congestion. So if it's too many cars or an accident or something of that, that sort, um, the iPhone will notify you. Uh, so basically, you, you wouldn't even need any GPS applications at all or any GPS programs at all when using something like this. So that's a really cool thing. Um, they also say that now it doesn't only show you traffic, but shows you under construction nods, accident nods, and alerts. So let's say you're heading somewhere and they're building something or something, a crane fell or uh, whatever the case may be, they actually um, implemented that into notifications in the iPhone. So that's a really, really cool thing. And the very last thing is the flyover. Um, they actually show you a different kind of camera angle um, that when you walk around, let's say, the city, uh, say New York City for example, you'll actually be able to get a skyscraper view, uh, kind of a flyover view. They also offer a three-dimensional view, which they're not showing here in the preview, but this is really, really cool. Um, I don't know when you'd need this, I mean, but I'm sure when you have it at your disposal, you'll play with it, you'll say, oh, alright, I may have uh, uh, something that I can do with this. Uh, the next thing is Siri, they're making big changes to Siri first, it's coming for the iPad, so that will arrive shortly um, to an iPad near you. Um, and you already know it uses, Siri uses Wolfram Alpha, which is a really strong search engine. It's really, really uh, calculated. So now they kind of redid the UI um, of Siri results. And they're basically telling you what you already know. I'm kind of disappointed at this. I thought it would be 10 times better. Um, but it's actually very basic. What they did was is they added more sports stuff. So you can actually say, hey, uh, when is the next Gi Giants game? Uh, when will the Giants play the Dodgers, for example? Here they have a picture, and it actually tells you the time, um, and I believe the stadium where they're going to play. You can also ask for scores. Um, I wonder if you can tell her, remind me if the Giants win, <laughs> you know, or remind me, um, you know, who's going to win, or, or post the scores, or update, update me to the minute. I don't know if they offer that, but um, they do offer find out scores from live games and current season, past game schedules, team rosters, player stats, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, soccer, um, and they're all just questions away, right? So next you have movies. Uh, they also implemented here. Let's say you tell Siri, yeah, you seen that commercial? Um, what is it with John Malkovich where he talks to Siri? He goes life, and she tells him about life. Well, they're kind of making that happen here. Um, you could tell Siri, I want to see a movie tonight, and she'll tell you basically the kind of movies that are out there. Um, and you can ask basically, all right, so this movie comes up. So when is it playing? And it'll tell you all the nearest theaters, and then you can actually ask to see the trailer. Uh, so that's really cool. And they also added restaurants. Again, this is this is very common. You could say, where can I eat sushi nearby? And it'll tell you. Um, it'd be nice if you could say, uh, where is there the cheapest sushi in the neighborhood? Or what is, uh, you know, half price today? Or yeah, I'm, I'm not sure they implemented that kind of localization, but that would be pretty cool. But this is what they have in here. Um, so they redid the UI. So Siri now is a little bit more capable. I wouldn't say capable, but it's more friendly. Um, it's already very capable. Wolfram Alpha is 
brilliant and the fact that it works with Siri is amazing um, Facebook integration something I won't be using much because I despise Facebook but you can now post pictures directly to Facebook um, oh I forgot one thing to say about Siri you can actually tell Siri now to launch applications you could say Siri open um, cut the rope or uh, you know you could say Siri launch uh, launch calendar, launch contacts, uh, or find me this person, and it works. So now you can actually command Siri to open things for you. Um, I'm sure maybe you were able to do this before, but they clarified it now. See, they set it over here. No tapping required, just say, for example, launch fly tracker. So that's up for grabs and it's available also. Um, going back to Facebook, so now you can actually, there's better integration with Facebook. Um, you can actually like apps and songs directly. Again, I, I'm not going to touch too much base on this. I didn't even read this whole thing because I don't even have a Facebook. I don't like Facebook. Um, I don't like being for sale and I don't like being a groupie. But hey, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody. But yeah, so they, they did put a lot of stuff into um, into Facebook integration. I think that this is their way to reach out to more Facebook users. Like, hey, let's get an iPhone um, as if it's not available enough out there. There's a big competition between Android and iPhone now and they're trying to really like bite off. Uh, some of that market. So um, they, d they do have uh, integrated throughout iOS. You'll definitely like it. Hope you will. Next thing is uh, shared photo streams. Uh, very cool thing again. Uh, this is very similar to Instagram which was acquired by Facebook. Um, you can now share uh, a photo stream with people and put a new picture just like Instagram um, and you'll get comments and notifications directly through iOS telling you hey someone liked your picture or they added it as a favorite or they commented it. Um, it's very very cool so you can you can now put it like oh it also works uh, on the air using iCloud um, but just keep in mind that this is when you think about the new shared photo stream think of an Instagram version kind of sorta uh, built specifically for um, iOS or for Apple I mean it's very cool it's about time that they got into this um, whatever applications Apple see out there they can easily manipulate and and just market to all their users and, and just totally destroy the competition um, considering the fact that Facebook just purchased Instagram two three months ago um, this pretty much is really really awesome so let's move on forward uh, passbook uh, Passbook is another new feature where you can actually collect coupons and, and you can scan your um, uh, cards, like gift cards and stuff like that. Uh, they give you a really quick overview here uh, of what it is. I didn't read this part. Time and location based. Um, it, it looks like it, it remi also has kind of built in reminders or something like that. I don't really understand this part. Uh, you know, it's a, probably a crappy review of this uh, uh, portion, but looking at the overview, I like the idea that I can purchase a, uh, a gift card, let's say in Starbucks, or I can purchase a gift card in Barnes & Nobles uh, and store it or buy it directly through um, my iPhone and just take it there rather than carry all these cards with me. So again, they're, they're kind of trying to emulate, I would say, Google Wallet. Um, and people will use because they have iPhones and once it's out there, they'll use it. Uh, so keep in mind what they want to do is they kind of have like a, a wallet kind of thing inside the iPhone where you can actually just collect all your gift cards and all these other things, tickets it looks like, tickets, gift cards and stuff like that. Um, FaceTime, again this is this is really one of the best things, I like this better than Siri, FaceTime now works over your cellular network. Uh, previously you only had to have Wi-Fi enabled uh, in order to use FaceTime. Now you don't need to have Wi-Fi enabled anymore. You can just use your 3G or 4G connection. Um, I use AT&T, for example, and it says 4G in the corner. So I can actually walk around and FaceTime right in the middle of the street without being connected to optimum Wi-Fi or any Wi-Fi hotspot. So that is a very awesome thing. Um, now you can FaceTime all the time. Uh, but you probably have a lot of data charges if you don't have an unlimited plan. But that's a very cool thing that now you can actually, you know, we're more going towards the future step of, of why this thing was really built, not just for Wi-Fi when you're at home or at work or, you know, in a, I don't know where, like a coffee spot. But let's say you're on the train or you're walking somewhere desolate when you only have cell phone service and you want to have a FaceTime chat or show someone something cool. So now you can do that uh, with this new uh, upgrade. Um, and the very last thing, is it the last thing? Nope, there's more. Okay, so now you can have your phone have an additional, uh, it has an additional menu for incoming calls. When a call comes in, 
you have now two additional buttons. Uh, one of the buttons is reply with a message. So let's say you don't want to pick up the phone on Jane and you just want to text her right back. So you click on reply with a message. It would immediately hang up the call uh, and open up the SMS window where you can write a message. So you can text immediately from a phone call. You don't directly have to answer it. Um, also, you have another button now that says remind me later. Um, say you're in a meeting or you're driving or something of that sort and the phone call rings. Now, usually if you hang up, you're going to forget that that person may have called you or it'll take you some time to remember um, you know, when they called you, what time they called you, who called you, right? So if you press remind me later, uh, you'll be able to have it remind, uh, automatically remind you um, that that person called. So that's a really cool feature. Say I'm with my boss and I just don't want to answer the phone when somebody I'm talking, I don't want to be embarrassed. I just hit the remind me letter button um, and 30 minutes later I walk out of that meeting after uh, him totally stressing me out and driving me nuts and up the wall. Um, and then I'll know, hey, this person called me. Now remember, hey, let me call him back. Uh, the cool thing about the reply with message also, if you can see here on the other uh, picture, the third screenshot, there is pre-made um, things such as I'll call you later, uh, pre-made messages, I'll call you later, I'm on my way, or what's up, or a custom one. Um, so I'll call you later, I guess. That's why they put it first because that's the obvious one. So rather than pick up the phone, just hit that one button and boom, text him, I'll call you later, and you forget about it. Um, the next thing, oh, yeah, another feature, I forgot to mention this, the Do Not Disturb feature. They actually stole something from Google Voice. Google Voice has a Do Not Disturb um, toggle switch that you can totally turn off Google Voice to not accept any phone calls and also not to accept any SMSs. So if you turn Do Not Disturb, this is exactly the same thing Google Voice has. If you turn it on in the settings, the, do, the DND, uh, what happens is, is that the phone will not ring um, and notifications wouldn't uh, appear on your screen. I mean, your phone will go totally silent uh, up until you turn D&D off. And when you do, you'll get everything in one shot. All your emails, your pop, your push notifications, everything. Uh, so that is a very, very cool thing. Uh, it's about time that they had this. Sometimes you just want to put your phone on Do Not Disturb. You don't just want to silence it. You want to totally put it to sleep. And that's what that does. So that's a very, very cool feature. Um, next thing is emails. The only thing I see here that they added to the email client uh, is this VIP inbox thing. Now you can have a special uh, folder, a VIP folder for selected starred messages. So you, it's like rating an, an iPod. You know how you rate music and it, co it goes into this uh, on-the-go playlist? Well, now you have the VIP inbox. You can actually set certain um, recipients uh, Usually, actually senders that email you um, to become a part of your VIP list which means that and it's iCloud enabled too which is sweet but uh, that means that those emails will prioritize and come into that folder first um, kind of like an email account very very cool um, especially nice if you have like six email addresses configured and you're receiving a jumbled of email it's a very very cool thing keeps you organized um, very sweet uh, another thing I see that they added here was add photos, videos, and email with just a few taps. You can already do that, but I guess they made it easier. Um, you know, it, the world is very heavy on sharing things. So imagine that with FaceTime over a uh, um, non-Wi-Fi network, cellular network, and quickly attaching images. You know how fast it's going to be sharing things with people. That is very, very cool. Um, and again, the, I believe this is the last thing, uh, just about the last thing. Uh, Safari was updated. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not going to talk about the iPad because I'm not rich enough to own one, so I'll just have an iPhone 4S. And the cool thing they added here is an offline reading list. You no longer have to have internet connection to now read your favorite pages. Um, in your reading list, you can actually download a cached version of the website, and you can always have that website now. Um, stored in your iPhone cache memory and you can always read it so even if you're let's say on the underground in the subway like I go on a train in New York City and um, there's no service you can quickly um, rather say quickly you can easily read your favorite websites without having um, to go online so there's no service there's no 4G 3G there's no Wi-Fi there's absolutely nothing and I still want to be able to read a site so I can quickly cache a site let's say uh, before I go on a train and just spend some time reading it I do that with PDFs regardless, but you know, it's cool to have it with uh, with the website, so it's really, really nice. Um, I see here full screen landscape, take websites full screen with a tap. Right, so now you can, the proximeter does the same thing, so it really doesn't matter. Um, but now you can tap and turn a site landscape mode. Again, a proximeter does exactly the same thing. Uh, next is accessibility. Uh, I guess this is only for. Um, 
iPads over here I see well at the see here they introduced uh, made for iPhone hearing aids okay but this doesn't relate to the iPhone um, so guided access restrict touch input to certain areas of the screen very very cool I guess if you have an iPad you can basically say hey if you touch this particular part of the iPad do not do anything so actually it's very nice there's a selection tool and you can pick I just picked up on this you can pick different spots where you don't want uh, you know the screen to feel the touch so you can kind of like lock it um, very cool uh, what else do they have in here find my iPhone everyone knows about this already if you don't Google it you need it <laughs> in the event that you lose your iPhone um, iCloud has this awesome feature I hope nobody ever loses their iPhone it's such a wonderful phone uh, find my friends that kind of feature uh, location based find my friends um, I guess this is all like touch-up software. This is just stuff to make um, the iPhone cuter. Um, not really an iOS feature in my opinion, but just another nice application. Um, Remodel store, so they're changing the look of the app store and the music store. Uh, you can expect a new look. Um, something more simple, more flashy, and you know more attractive to get you to waste money to buy music and movies and TV shows and stuff. Uh, and new features for China. Well, I'm in the United States, so I didn't really read this, but I'm guessing that they put in what support 30,000 characters. Yeah, Chinese is a crazy language. Um, so that's cool for the Republic of China. Good job. Um, so that's in an overview my uh, my uh, my review of iOS 6. Some from what I've seen and what I've read. Um, iOS 6 is compatible with the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4, and the iPhone 4S. Uh, it, also compatible, it is also compatible with the iPod Touch 4th generation, iPad 2, and of course the iPad 3, or they didn't call it iPad 3, they call it the new iPad. Um, and that'd be it. So that is a very cool thing, and I can't wait this fall and when you all get that little pop-up. I'm sure it's going to be all over the news um, when, at midnight, uh, you know, people are going to be up waiting checking that you know check for software updates button on their phone just to get this uh, to be on top of technology but that is very very sweet again if you want to read about these yourself um, you can go to apple.com and just click on the new iOS 6 uh, features button uh, the URL for it is apple.com forward slash iOS forward slash iOS 6 um, I hope you guys like it I just discussed a little bit um, or discussed most of it and uh, enjoy this is very cool and if you have an iPhone you will be very happy um, this is a big step in marketing uh, and moving along against Android, trying to compete with Google and integrating more of the social uh, streams such as Instagram type apps and this Facebook integration um, and obviously competing with Google. Um, you know, Apple is really trying to stay ahead of its game. It's very hard to stay on top when you already are on top. You know, it's easier to get there, but it's hard to maintain it. Uh, so good work to Apple and thank you guys for watching. Take care. Bye.